It is May 2022 and we're in the Red Kite Touring Park which is exclusively for adults and it's no one under 18 years old allowed in and at least one person in the party has to be 25 years or older. The approach road, which is quite a good one and not too noisy, you get the odd vehicle, is the B4518. As you come down, the entrance ahead of us you can see the parking for cars and two parking areas for motorhomes or cars with trailers or caravans the one on the left has a PowerPoint, so if you get here out of hours, you can stay there overnight with power. The hours for coming in is between 1pm and 6pm. You have to leave by 11am and the shop and reception are open from 8.30am to 7pm. You can see the reception down there the wooden building on the side. Now if you go over the top here, the site is set into four sections, all with the name of the birds. The one below us here is Heron. The one on the other side that you can see with the curve Okay, that one is Red Kite, the one opposite the toilet block which we're coming down towards and you can see between the trees there, I'll just get up on the curb, that one over there is Buzzard and the one at the top is Owl. All of the pitches are fully serviced, they all have electric hookup, they all have drinking water, they all have cleaning water, they all have grey waste and they all have brown waste for your toilets as long as you use green chemicals not blue. Over here in case you haven't used your pitch is grey waste point predominantly for motorhomes. And you come round here and this is your waste point. You've got general waste and rice recycling. Recycling is mainly cans, bottles and paper. The reception also has a small shop which they say sells the essentials like beer, wine and spirits. But joking apart they do have a few things but not a huge amount. There is reception. information leaflets cold things not for you girl and there's wine no they haven't got any milk come here
Okay. Now to get through the barrier is a key fob, which are given when you check in, and you return when you leave. But it won't work during 10.30 p.m. and 7.30 a.m. when the barrier is locked. Now this is Owl. Now, on the side here is an, a dog walking area, but this area the dog has to be kept on a lead. And we haven't used it because it's a hill. I'm going back the other way. That's my dog. She doesn't like me disappearing, so she shouts at me. Well, they can't be off the lead. All dogs have to be kept on the lead inside the main park area. But there is a dog walking area where they can be let off the lead. And it is large. So this one here is Buzzard. That one straight ahead. Down there is Red Kite and that is Heron. Now this is the amenities block. So the first one you come to is the dishwashing area which as you can see it's hot and cold taps which you push down and they're timed but they get very very hot which is very nice also in here there are books and dvds and jigsaw puzzles the books can be exchanged some of them some have to be returned to here DVDs have to be returned to here. There's also a visitor's book, the first aid and defibrillator, notice board, and more leaflets. Next door to that is the ladies. which very nice showers this is a big one they're all fixed head but they do have a temperature control and a sensor button for it to come on and off it is timed for the water you've got two cubicles with sinks again sensors for the water, toilets, sensors for the water, hand basins, sensors for the water, and two more showers, one here and one here. Again, it's the same setup <clears throat> and has a duck board which I found you do need because the water comes through and rolls towards the door. There's a hairdryer for your use, if you wish, and a hand dryer and a full length mirror, which can be very useful. Next door to that's coming this way. It's the family shower room. 
and toilet sink, basin, shower, same setup, and toilet all in here. Now between, we believe, 11 and 12, the ladies and this side is closed for cleaning. Laundry room next. So, six for hand washing, washer dryer, ironing board, and iron all in here. around here that door is for staff we believe it's where they keep all the cleaning stuff this is the door to the dog washing room but it costs five pound an hour to use it um, I don't believe it's open no. it needs a key on this side You've got the Elson point. If you use blue chemicals in your toilet, this is where you have to come empty the toilet, which is quite a decent size and kept really clean. Basin for washing your hands, soap dispenser, dryer, and mop and bucket for cleaning the floor if you happen to make a mess on the floor. That's another family one on this side. So if when the ladies is closed for cleaning, you can use this family one on this side. When the gents is closed for cleaning, you can use the family room on the other side. So you've always got a toilet. Gents there, which obviously I can't go into, but I believe it's the same for the ladies except they've got three urinals and the ladies don't and disabled toilet and you get the key from reception you tell them when you arrive that you're going to need the disabled facilities and you'll get a key the site is quite big exceedingly clean Every pitch, as I said, is service, fully serviced, but you don't have to do that. Views are amazing. Straight ahead, as you go down here, where that motorhome is coming out of is the Red Kite site. This one is Heron. While I'm walking down here, a bit of information for you. The fee for the site includes two adults and one dog and one car. Where also your motorhome or your caravan or whatever. Dog wash, as I said, is five pound per hour. They have a fishing pond down here. And the fishing pond is five pound per day or 25 pound per week. Extra adults are £6 per night. Extra dogs are £1.50 per night. Extra car is £1 per night. And if you want to pick your own pitch, if you know which pitch you want, that's going to cost you an extra £2 per pitch per night. And it has to be a minimum of a four-night stay. The advantage with these ones on Heron in the summer is you have your own little bit of garden space. You've got steps up to a little grassy terrace. Which is 
then got another little terrace for you to put your chairs and table on. The downside in the summer is you'll have to bring your own parasol. Now when I booked, I booked Buzzard, but we were put on Heron, and when I queried it, I was told that when you book online, whatever you pick, they don't see that at reception, so they don't know which one you've picked, so they will choose a site for you. And I believe you'd have to phone them if you wanted to make sure and that's where the extra charge comes in. Now as you come round here, and you go down this slope, you come to this area here, where the gate is. Now the dogs have to be kept on a lead, inside the touring park itself but this through the gate is a dog walking area which is absolutely huge and they can go off the lead in here so you've got all around there. The fishing pond straight ahead is fenced off. Dogs are allowed in there but they have to be on a lead. But outside of there, all around here, they can be off the lead. Our dog loves being off the lead although she doesn't stray far. All of this and up the bank here these are sort of mown paths with the long grass left on each side. The views are spectacular. Then the path splits in two here. You can go up the hill a bit further, or this way. I'm going this way to show you that there is a pond that is open to the dogs. So if you have a dog that loves jumping in water, you need to be aware of it. As you can see ahead, it's quite a large pond. It's got two ducks on it at the moment. So again, if your dog likes chasing ducks, you need to be aware of that as well. So we come down to the pond. It's like a grassy walk all the way around it. There's a fenced in area. With a gate. For the dogs. To play together if they want to. Or if your dog doesn't do recall very well. 
It's also the best place if you want to throw a ball for the dog to fetch. So there's a path down there. There's the gate. And that's the fenced in area just there. Another path going uphill there. And there's lots of other paths. And there are walks. Some from the campsite that go up into the hills that you can see ahead of us. We haven't been on them. There's also a walk from here to the town of Planet Lois, where there are several bars that will take dogs and restaurants that will take dogs. There's equally a lot that won't. I hope this video has been of use to you and you've learned anything you need to know.